the other big long video that more people are interested in, I think by far, and which would require an insurmountable amount of effort to go down case by case is when fans become stalkers by Maddox. Maddox has not spoken about the, uh, the lawsuit or his falling out with Dick Masterson and uh, Jake uh, Sean for, uh, for years. I think six years now has been from when the, the biggest problem in the universe ended and when this video is made. And I think that the video is both very embarrassing and also extremely compelling. And the issue is entirely in its presentation and its length. This is a two hour, 45 minute long expose uh, by Maddox. It has pretty decent editing. Like uh, it's pretty, there's certain jokes that land really well. The issue is entirely in the beginning. Um, like you can see the intro chapter is eight and a half minutes long and uh then this part up until about 22 minutes is maddox sucking his own dick and explaining that he's really super popular he's very important he's friends with uh pen from pen and teller he, he's done all these great things he's a new york times bestseller yada yada so obviously he has rabid fanboys like dick masterson I think that like if he didn't have this thing where he had to stroke his own ego and just sorry, it's not even that it's 32 minutes before he gets to um, him explaining why he was silent. I think that if he managed to condense this down to like three minutes, like one tenth of length. Hi, I'm an author. I've done all this stuff. Um, I did a podcast with this guy called Dick Masterson. And uh, we had a falling out and then he immediately proceeds to, uh, you know, why he was silent despite you know all the shit that would have been a much better video unfortunately he feeds dick all this all this bullshit all this like feather pluffing and he makes his own video less accessible to a normal audience because who the fuck is gonna who doesn't know maddox is going to listen to this guy suck his own dick for 30 minutes straight it's a, it's it's a really really it's really unfortunate because a lot of a lot of what he says is interesting and the longer that it goes, the better that it gets at like the two minute, the two minute, 45 minute mark. It's like his balls are on the table and it's like, it's crazy. And he hides that at two hours, 45 minutes in. It's like, he shouldn't have done that. Um, so yeah, just saying this, like I tried listening to Dick's, um, cover of this. I will give you a, um, a very brief impersonation. I, I've watched like literally a couple minutes before I got bored of it. It goes like this. Oh my God. He's so crazy. And then Sean goes, yeah, I think that he might have like genuine schizophrenia. Like he's crazy now. It's like, and then he unpauses it for another 30 seconds and then pauses it. And it's just, it's it's really it's painful to fucking sit through he has to he has to pretend that this is the funniest shit possible no matter what um so he explains why he was quiet and uh the reason why he was quiet in a nutshell is that uh he just didn't want to give him attention because he believed that dick was just a troll and that if he had just ignored him then everything would have resolved itself on its own um, however, he alleges that Dick continually provoked him and basically forced him to respond to content um, or forced him into a, into a corner in some ways and never stop. Like what Dick would do instead of um, just like laughing at his uh, whatever the fuck, whatever his videos is that he would aggressively go out to um, events that he was at and harass people and try to get him fired from actually that's a. Uh, Later down the line, he just says that he, his idea was based off his uh, PETA. He said that PETA um, was, he realized that PETA's uh, advertising was to get attention. So he thought, I'm not going to talk about PETA anymore. And I'm not going to talk about this guy and see how that works out. He then calls Dick Masterson completely irrelevant. Uh, it's actually kind of embarrassing. Um, I want to see the Maddox Black Blast thing. Uh, there's a part where he explains how Dick basically sucked his ass for, for months and months and months until he agreed to help him. 
uh, and that was pretty funny. There's a part where uh, there's a, a book treatment that he wanted to publish where um, where Dick had basically written an entire book about him and called him a god and said that he was an extremely great entertainer and came up with this term called the Maddox Blast. And I wish I could find that because it's really funny. Here's him dressed as a pony, by the way. Everyone's seen this, though. Okay, so there's the silence. And, oh, oh, he also alleged that Dick accepted payment for, um, for merchandise or for sales related to their problem, the biggest problem in the universe. And it was in Bitcoin and Dick wired or not wired, but he used his personal wallet for the sales. So at the time, the amount of money that they earned through Bitcoin was negligible because it was 2015. However, now he alleges that it might be as much as $50,000 that Dick had stolen from him and didn't split with him. Uh, the issue is, and I looked into this, there's two different torts that I believe you could use in regards to someone taking money for goods and then running away with it. It would either be a, a common law fraud tort or it would be what's called conversion. And conversion is an interesting tort that many people don't know about. It's basically if you take if you take something that you don't have rights to in a general sense, not just like an object, but also, you know, rights to some kind of um, it, like media or mineral right rights or lumber rights on a property and you take somebody else's rights and then you do something with that you may put in your own work but you take that and then you sell it somehow and make money um the original owner who you took from is entitled by by law uh to the money that you earned using their property without their permission that's called conversion so you could say that either it was just a fraudulent thing to take the the bitcoin from him or you could say that he took something and then made money off of it which would be the case with bitcoin um however it's been so long that those have statutes of limitations I think it's three years for conversion and four years for fraud in California. It's now six years. So he would have a really hard time trying to get around the statute of limitations on the Bitcoin shit because he waited so long uh, before doing anything, anything at all about, about Dick. Uh, in part because of his financial situation. Dick has literally financially ruined Maddox. And now it, it's really hard for him to take a swing at him. Um, because Dick is funded well enough that he can absorb any singular lawsuit indefinitely forever and probably also make money off of it by talking about it. Um, but Maddox is not in that position because he's bankrupted. Um, he talks about the... How, oh, he talks about how... Um, Dick's, he thinks that Dick's numbers are fake based off the fact that Dick gets like next to no engagement on all forms of social media and then backs that up by posting uh, how he posted a random picture of a vacuum cleaner and he got that more engagement than Dick Masters and shit, which that's been speculated for a while that his numbers aren't what he purports them to be because of the engagement, but it's really hard to tell without having a look into the analytics. Uh, this is the, the lamest thing in the entire, entire, like, two and a half hours. Um, Dick, at some point, decided to ask his fans to burn any books of Maddox's that they had. Uh, and, oh, well, it's called book burning because it's it's talking about how his fans went after uh, Fuck Whales, which was his last book that he released. And uh, they bombed it with negative reviews, and Dick personally bombed it with, like, a fake review. So he called this a book burning, but then he also... Um, Dick literally held, held like a book burning contest. So uh, he decides to compare him to Nazis. Books. He even offered people rewards for burning them along with my merchandise. And sadly, this won't be the last thing this mob will have in common with another famous mob of book burners, as you'll see later in this video. I that that's so cringe why do you do that why do people do that like you're talking about how this guy is fucking with you and you want you to pe you want people to take it seriously and then just in the background you hear das fliegen meine grün <laughs> 
Ein tausend fliegen. <laughs> Just like random German in the distance and a swastika for like, like a, for a good measure. Like, come on, bro. How am I supposed? How, I cannot. I literally cannot take this seriously. Um. Anyways, that was that made me laugh out loud and cringe. Uh, even though he was on a, he was on a good terror like yeah this guy here's proof that this guy was fucking with me and trying to make it so that the book i put out was not financially successful um he, he posted uh screenshots to implicate that dick was literally paying people to fuck with him which might be its own kind of crime and then uh, hitler <laughs> just out of <laughs> just out of nowhere like, come on uh complains about doxing which well, okay you want to complain about doxing. That's a very normie, friendly thing to say. People don't like doxing. Sure, whatever. Um, and he supports this by showing that his address shows up on his Reddit a lot and that uh, there was some comedy thing that he did where... Um, this guy's a huge fucking dickhead. I don't know what his name is. He's a big fat cunt uh, that was on the Drunken Peasants Project and, podcast. And, and I'm not talking about... Um, Ben Grady. So this guy was on the Drunken Presence, and he was going to do a show. And he reached out, because it was Dick on the show, he reached out to Maddox and said, I'm having Dick Masterson on the show. I know you guys have, like, a heated thing. He's going to have his fans in the audience. Is there anything that you would like me to put on a block list um, uh, for the show? And I remember this story. It was a long list of stuff. But one of the two of the words that were on... Um, the list was 829, the number 829, and then the word sycamore. And he's reading this list of words that he collected from Maddox uh, under false pretenses, under good faith. And it, it it's his home address. So Dick is on stage. This guy is reading up the thing. And then he uh, they react in such a way that you can tell that that's his home address when he reads it aloud. Um, so... He alleges doxing, and then uh, the Patreon thing comes up over and over again and says that Patreon is supporting this um, by allowing him to stay on the platform and collect $20,000 a, a month. And then... He talks about how Vito is a pedophile and how Digibro is a pedophile, which is actually he doesn't even talk about how Vito is a pedophile. He should really ha should have talked more about how Vito is a pedophile and how it, like he, he mentions that they rebooted the biggest problem in the universe without his permission because they own the trademark now. Um, but he doesn't talk about how Vito Gasaldi is a fat pedophile. And I don't know why, but he does talk about how Digibro is a pedophile. I guess it apparently took him like three years to get this video made, so maybe he, he had lost track of what was happening. Uh, but he doesn't mention Vito, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through. So that this does not take literally forever. Uh, this is this is the also a really, really cringe argument. I'll play this. We have Maddox and that. Maddox. Maddox is Maddox. 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 By now, it may seem obvious that this stalker is deeply obsessed. So when I rejected him, something in him, on a deeper psychological level, seems to have snapped. As crazy as this sounds, there is actually a precedent for it. The pop singer Selena okay, was. This is bullshit. I don't even know why he talks about this posted a photo of it calling it anti Maddox protection, even though I've never threatened him and haven't even spoken to him in over half a decade. And then he posed with another gun while wearing a shirt with a reference to my book that he attacked, all while his followers openly suggested that he aim it at me. So his complaint is that Dick bought a gun and he considers that a threat. That's also incredibly gay. Um, then he complains about the N word. Uh, but this has this has a purpose because Dick went out and said, or identify that somebody on the Madcast network had said the N word on a podcast that was not on the Madcast network. And then because this guy had said the N word, <clears throat> Dick and his fans went out to all their advertisers, all their sponsors and said, this is like a, a racist podcaster. He's on this network. You guys are advertising with them. You should drop them. And he was successful in getting all these sponsors to drop the Madcast network um, from their, uh, from their financial support. However, obviously that's fucking bullshit. And not only is that bullshit, like uh, Dick's people are inward enjoyers. Here's your here's your Nick Ricada cameo, the blackface lawyer. He makes fun of that. Uh, 
Hazen Cruz um, was somebody who said the N word a lot. There's like a big N word montage of this that I would like. Oh, here we go. I think this is it. Pearls to clearly hoods. I just want to know if if you're if both of you parties involved are a fucking sponsor of this because you should be horrified. Wow, he sounds really horrified. Holy shit, poor thing. Get this man some pearls to clutch. And what's especially egregious about this is that even if it were true, which it is not, it doesn't seem like the stalker or his hate mob would be the type of people who would have a problem with the N-word. In fact, they seem exactly like the type of people who'd use it themselves. How do I know? Because even though I didn't say it, you know who did? His entire fucking community. The N-word montage. These Such are his followers. Music. His contributors. His guests. His co-hosts. <laughs> his moderators. And you guessed it. When you're raped by a pack of <laughs> Fanboy's regular co-host and I remember when Dick was talking about that. Uh, he definitely he's talking. It's a song about Mel Gibson uh, called "Imagine If There's No Mel Gibson," and he goes. Uh, I'll play it actually. I find this. I mean, it is critical of Hi. Mel Gibson. Uh, obviously, I, I have, I personally, to be clear, I have no issue with this song, but uh, LA would. Hi. Uh, last week, Mel Gibson allegedly said that he was glad John Lennon got shot because the song Imagine is disgusting. Well, I think Imagine is a beautiful song. I think everyone agrees with me. Uh, the, some of the lyrics might have offended him. So I, I took the liberty of changing the lyrics uh, so Mel could enjoy the song too. I hope you like it. Well, you might say you look like a pig in heat. And it'll surely be your fault. When you're raped by a pack of n****s Just like Jesus said while he was on the cross Just like Jesus said while he was on the cross My favorite, my one of my favorite things about Dick is that he is a actual, talented, trained pianist and it just fits, it fits so well into the dick, the dick persona, the dick show. I love his branding. I think that's, that's why I was like drawn to show up on the show. It's just like, it's, it's so tight. It's just such an amazingly tight branding package. His name is Dick Masterson on the dick show. And he's a penist. Like, that's amazing. That's not such clever branding. Uh, but yeah, he did say that. He says he does sing it just to be clear, and then he censors it out. So there's no, I don't think he's on the record saying the N word, which is why uh, he is immunized from such consequences. He does go after um, Riketa, and he talks about how the Harry's, the, the man, the man purse company, dropped him as a sponsor as a result of that. Uh, he talks about the rape list, and he talked, I, I was here for this um, because the rape list was on 8chan. Someone had, uh, at the time, 8chan was just getting popular, and uh, people suggested, I suggested even, that he and his community set up a uh, 8chan board for the dick show. They did, and people from his community, because um, the guys that did this called into the show and apologized for it, and Dick told them not to worry about it, because uh, it was funny. Um, but they basically posted a list of every woman that Maddox knew and said it would be funny if they got raped. And uh, this was the, the crux of, including his girlfriend at the time, and this was the crux of him making the video calling Dick a rape apologist or whatever. He, he never called him a rape apologist. He brings that up. Um, but he said that Dick's community did this and was threatening him. And uh, that got him in trouble with UCB. And then when Dick talked about how he got into trouble with UCB, that got him permanently banned from UCB, uh, which is a comedy club in L.A. Uh, so he took that. That's one of their main grievances like that's really important to the dick show lore because maddox going out and saying that dick was responsible for this rape list on 8chan um really tanked his prospects within la that he was you know 
had been working his entire life on on making. So when he made the rape list video and talked about how Dick's community, um, you know, was was doing this to threaten him and it caused consequences for him, that basically authorized all's fair in love and war. Like, sure, we can go after your your advertisers because you got him kicked out of UCB by calling him a you know a rape a rape apologist. Uh, that was the line. Uh, so that was really important, and you talked about that. Um, I mean, I think the guilt by association shit is real fucking gay. Uh, and the, the, the two... Before I get into the final chapters, which are funny, the two things that Maddox did that really, 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 really fucked him over more than being a Spurg was the rape list video and then the lawsuit. Because I think that there is probably... Buried deep down in there, a genuine case to be made that Dick Masterson has knowingly, or sorry, I'm calling him Dick Masterson, which gratiates him. A uh, Daxi pad, apparently, is the new hot meme to call Dick. Uh, there is a genuine case to be made that Daxi pad has, over the course of his career, uh, caused serious financial harm to Maddox in a way that's unfair and unlawful. I think that you could, if you had the right go the right wits about you and you went about it the right way you probably could make that case i think that the pieces are there uh to make that that case with what maddox did and um and what has tanked his reputation permanently is that when he went ahead and filed this lawsuit he sued innocent people he sued the company uh patreon to try and get dick kicked off of which he still is not kicked off of but he also sued the customer service representative that was in, responsible for taking his tickets complaining about dick's patreon which is like thankfully i think patreon covered their employee um which is very nice of them they did not have to do that but it could definitely have ruined that random person's life for no reason uh, the other person was Asterios, and this is the other bit, really big deal. Asterios worked for a company in New York called Weber Shandwick, and uh, Dick or, or Maddox sued both Weber Shandwick and Asterios um, for for Asterios's involvement in the Dick Show after the biggest problem in the universe had ended. Asterios has done nothing to Maddox. As far as I'm aware, I've watched both his full video on Asterios and also this one. I cannot remember a single thing that Asterios has ever done to Maddox to warrant his anger. And Asterios you know, disappeared, ghosted Dick years ago. But Maddox still hates Asterios Coconuts, and I cannot figure out why. And it was really, really terrible of him to sue Asterios and to sue Weber Shanwick because he did get fired from his job. Weber Shanwick did not pay for his uh, lawsuit. And um, and it ruined Asterios' life because he was trying to do the good boy routine in L.A. He was trying to do like the proper get into Hollywood stuff. That kind of thing is very fragile. And Maddox like threw a fucking firebomb at this guy and torched all of his prospects in his current job. For no reason. And he's still angry at him. And Asterios is not saying anything about Maddox. He's not involved in the dick show. He's not doing anything. And he's and I just I cannot understand it. I don't understand. That is his main issue. Is that he ruined that guy's life for no reason. I think the the reason why Maddox ruined Asterios' life is that he was associated with Dick and he helped Dick get the the Dick show off of the ground after the biggest problem in the universe. He saw that as betrayal. And most importantly, I think that Asterios' life was way easier to ruin than Dick Masterson's. Dick's life is is has a a foundation that's much stronger, a community base that's very broad and willing to send him money. Asterios did not have that. And he was trying to integrate into the L.A. structure um, legitimately, like in the actual way that you're supposed to go about that as opposed to how Dick did it. And he just he just um, over hurt feelings. He fucking ruined that guy's career. And it's like, how can how can I can't root for you? You know, I want to root for you because I think Dick is a, a fucking scumbag. And it would be funny to see him get comeuppance for, you know, his his shitty shit that he's done. But. I can't, you know, when you when you went after that random employee in Patreon, you went after Asterios for literally no reason. It's and he's still he's. It's not even like he learned his lesson. Like, oh, I shouldn't have sued Asterios. I'm really sorry for that. I realized that he wasn't, you know, doing anything bad. 
and I'm really sorry. Um, he's still angry at him to this day. The first, the first video he makes breaking his silence on the um, the lawsuit is to just take shots at Asterios for no reason. Um, so it's re it's really frustrating because you know you want to root for him, maybe maybe if you're weird and petty and vindictive. <laughs> But if you are the kind of person who wants to see an underdog win, as uh, some of us in the audience may be, uh, it's still hard, to, it's it, it, impossible to really, really root for him in good faith because of the stereo stuff. Uh, so that's that. So then the final chapters of this are actually pretty funny. Um, he talks about uh, how he was canceled. Uh, the X stuff is really funny. There's a part where, I think I'll just read this. Can I find this? He doesn't have any other content, brand, or identity without me. He's a bottom feeder who spends his entire life reliving the glory days he had with me. It also doesn't help he has Coomer eyes. Even though we've been broken up for a while now, it really solidifies that you've moved on and that it's permanently over. I guess I always just figured that, in the end, when we were both ready, we'd make our way back to each other. I know it's a selfish way to think, as well as totally unrealistic. In a way, I guess this is good news for me. I shouldn't cling to the idea of you. So maybe it will force me to let you go and move on. It still hurts like hell, though. For what it's worth, I will never feel about anyone else the way I did for you. It's not like someone will come along one day and I'll change my opinion on that. I know for a fact that this is true. Sorry, I fucked everything up. Uh-oh, that letter sounds like somebody wasn't over me and still isn't because in her own words, she'll never feel about anyone else the way she did for me. So, um, that's, this is, this, this shit flinging with 80s girl is a high point of it because it's so like nitty gritty rolling around in the muck just burning down like 80s girl was like a teacher and she has had like a tangential like light presence on the dick show um so her her life is a little bit easier to fuck up than dicks uh and the the importance of this is that the whole narrative that Daxipad has has ran with for years is that Maddox is a sour bitch because he took he he fucked his girl he took his bitch and it, like the entire thing has been di that he's just upset that I have his girlfriend and Maddox has always maintained that's fucking like absurd why would you have my sloppy seconds why would I care um and this email exchange that he's never published before where she ha is caught up in feelings trying to get over him and he's over her because there's an email that he posts in reply where um he calls him dick a cuck by the way and he posts his email where he shows that um he's telling her we can't be friends until you are not emotionally you, but you have to be honest with yourself and with me if you can't get past the fact that i'm dating somebody new then it will be then it will take you some time before we can normalize our friendship. So he basically tells A's girl to fuck off. And this is a, a very strong contradiction to a baseline narrative that is like critical for Dick's extended universe of like the fight with Maddox. It is all the premise has always been that the root issue was that he had chump syndrome and could never get over the fact that A's girl was with him. Um, so there's that. Um, let's see. And then he, he reads, uh, th this part's funny. I that I did write some really embarrassing and cringy text messages to her. And in the interest of full disclosure, I'm going to read some of them to you right now. Here are some text messages I sent. I've ached for it since the second we met, just to feel you in that atavistic way. I could fuck you forever, raw and pounding and soft like a romance novel. I know, I know, it's super embarrassing. I also told her that I just wanted her to say and be anything and I would worship it and not to hide how happy and eager I was to please her. 
I don't know how I'll ever live this down. In fact, I even wrote her a book of poetry. This is super embarrassing, but here's a snippet of a poem called I Want to Believe. I want to believe that love is more than a neurochemically induced state of insanity involving the cohesion of two projected matrices. I want to believe that it's more than animalistic lust and raw atavistic fear and greed. Look, I know I'm going to be ruthlessly mocked for this, that I wrote that as an adult and in that handwriting. Oh, wait a second, hold on. I think I accidentally read the wrong thing. These are actually poems and text messages written by Fanboy. That's right, one of his exes recently did to him what he did to me, and it's much, much worse. He actually sent those text messages to her and gave her a book full of poems that she made public in what may possibly go down as the most hilarious example of what goes around comes around. His jilted ex released pages and pages of this embarrassing, sappy bullshit. Remember earlier when I said his book treatment was the second most embarrassing thing I'd ever read in my entire life? Well, this is the first. And there's a lot more where this came from, and it's one of the many reasons it's a bad idea to secretly date your friend's ex. But the funniest and most tragic reason of all is that sometimes she might be using you to get back to the person she's still in love with. And I know how they both feel about each other, because after we broke up, Fanboy told me that he always thought that she was fat. And she came up with a nickname for him because he didn't know how to parallel park and thinks that horror movies are too scary. That nickname is Daxipad, and he hates it. Okay. Um, that part's very funny. That's all the Jesse Lee, Jamie Lee Hughes, I think is the, her name. Um, that story is funny. He doesn't even go into the details. Uh, Dick has always like claimed that he's like a huge playboy swinger who always fucks young box. He smashes those 17 year olds all the day, all the, all the time, every day. Right. Well, he tried, he's been a monogamous or, or a, I don't know if it's monogamous. I don't know what their status is, but he's been in a, in a long-term relationship with 80s girl for like six years now, because that's when the, the breakup happened. And during that time, he tried to arrange a threesome with Jamie uh, Lynn Hughes, uh, the woman who re he wrote these poems for. And it um, ended in disaster because 80s girl had written a series of emails to Jamie Lynn Hughes about how Dick had, ruined her life, had denied her a family, how she felt like they were going nowhere fast, that she was very unhappy, and uh, that she was willing to try this threesome thing even though she wasn't really into it because she wanted to make uh, Dick happy. And then at some point, because of course, anyone trying to willing to do a threesome is going to be neurotic BPD, insane person. Uh, Jamie Lynn Hughes blew all this up, posted all of it, and it was a huge embarrassment. And Dick's cope for the, the shitty poems and stuff is, yeah, of course I wrote that. I'll, I'll, I'll say anything to smash some box, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'll say anything to get laid. Ha ha ha. Uh, I have a feeling, though, that's not what his emotional state was when he wrote all that shit. So that's all very embarrassing, and it's funny to watch Maddox laugh at it because, uh, as terrible as a lot of his shit is, that is pretty fucking embarrassing. Um, the restraining order he goes over the story with the restraining order was that, um, Dick's or uh, Maddox's girlfriend was harassing 80s girl and trying to get her fired from her job, calling up every the, the, the way the story was told was that, um, his girlfriend called up every single school in the entire uh, greater Los Angeles area trying to say, Hey, does a, uh, does a uh, eighties girl work here? And then saying, no. Okay. And then she just called every, every school she could find. And the truth is, is that she called the, the, the board directly and uh, filed a professional conduct complaint because eighties girl had been flinging shit at her first. And the, because they didn't have money and they didn't lawyer up, but 80s girl did, um, 80s girl then filed for a restraining order saying that she was trying to harass her employer and won because uh, Maddox's girlfriend was representing herself and uh, 80s girl was funded by Dick. So that's his counter narrative to the um, the restraining order. And that that's also, if that's true, and his telling of that is accurate. That's also a huge blow to Dick because the restraining order is another thing. That's like, we can do anything. We, we can treat Maddox like a fucking dog. We can ruin him financially. We can tear apart his prospects. We can go after his advertisers. We can go after anybody who works with him because his girlfriend tried to get eighties girl, a poor innocent teacher fired from her dream job of educating children. And apparently uh, she was the one that was doing something uh, in the beginning. Do you think he waxes it? Waxes what? <laughs> I don't even want to know. Don't answer that. 
And then finally the lawsuit. He basically says he he lays out that he has a good case for you know damages against Dick, but then doesn't mention he like he just says that Asterius was like like even the fact that like he throw, he mentions that the lawsuit was thrown out because of jurisdiction and he ran out of money to finance it. And it's like if he had just filed it in LA against Dick directly without involving Patreon and Weber Shandwick and Asterios for no reason, uh, he would have fared much better than how he did it. And if you don't know, he literally filed it in a state that neither of them were in, New York, because that was the state that Weber Shenwick and Asterios were in. So he didn't even just pick like the area that would make sense because they both lived in the same fucking like uh, uh, like area. They lived right next to each other. So it would make sense to file it in California. No, he went out of his way and filed in New York because he wanted to make sure that it was in Asterios and Weber Shenwick's uh, jur- backyard so that they would have to answer it. And so, like, he he really, literally, he sabotaged his own lawsuit for what appeared to be, on his face, legitimate grievances of torturous interference and stuff, and uh, conversion, even. I think he mentions that as one of the, the reasons. Uh, whatever validity he had in his lawsuit, he destroyed it in a legal sense and also in a public uh, image sense by suing Asterios for no reason. It, it's, and he, he's still not over it. He hasn't learned that lesson, which is uh, pretty fucking shameful. And then the end of the the final chapter of this called the Mystery Mountain is unhinged glory. Um, I I am not kidding. I love this. Maddox announces to the world that he is insane. He he has an, literally he announces that he is going after Jack Conte, the CEO of Patreon. He is announcing to the world that he is unhinged. He has nothing to lose, and he will kill and eat Daxipad alive. If, it, if it's the end of him, he's going to go after Patreon. He's going to go after Jack Conte personally. He's going to find every investor to Patreon Inc. and contact them and say, you're funding this fucking lunatic uh, that I hate. And he's going to personally try and destroy Patreon. And not only that, he pulled down a list of everybody who was subscribed to the old Dick Show Facebook group and put them on a website um, calling them neo-Nazis. So he's not only going to go after Jack Conte and Patreon and their investors, he's going to go after everyone who follows the Dick uh, Show Facebook group and personally try and ruin them too. Uh, he like, I don't even, I can't, obviously I can't endorse that behavior because it goes against everything that I've, uh, that I would ever stand for. But at the same time, there is something unimaginably, uh, I I can't even put a word to it. Just unbelievable, literally unbelievable that he would just say, I am going to go full scorched earth on everybody. I hope you all fucking die. I hope that I am the end of you and everything that you cherish. It's like, okay. (laughs) It's like, I can kind of, I can, I can respect the hustle. Okay. That's all I can say. It's, uh, I've never, I'm, I've literally never seen anything like it. I've never seen someone make a three hour long video where they cap it off by saying, I'm going to be the personal reckoning of every single person who has ever slighted me in the last six years. Never. I have nothing to compare this with. That's just, uh. He's been pushed. He, this is the nerd rage. He's been pushed around for too long. He's going to go buy a gun and start hunting people. <laughs> he's going to hunt Jack Conte down. He's going to go. He's going to sneak into to, to Dick's house and sorry, his mansion. And he's going to find the shotgun that he was complaining about earlier. Steal the shotgun and murder Jack Conte with it in an act of uh, of uh, unbridled revenge. Okay, and that's the Maddox thing. There's one more thing that I want to add to the Maddox thing. I think that my summary is very concise and hits all the right points. Uh, there's one re- one response that I have omitted, and that is a response of Nick Riccada, um, who was notified by absolutely everyone that, uh, oh, I didn't even mention this. He bought a domain called Nick Riccada is not a blackface lawyer dot com. Because at some point, Rick- uh, Maddox said that Riccada was a blackface lawyer. Nick sent him a formal cease and desist requesting that he either a post a public apology saying that he is not a blackface lawyer because while he has warned, this is literally what he says. Cause it's like a joke. It's like, it's a formal cease and desist, but it's like a joke. Um, he says he, yes, he has practiced law and yes, he has worn blackface. However, 
He has never practiced law in blackface or promoted his his legal practice while wearing blackface. Therefore, it is defamation to call him a blackface lawyer. So uh, he sent that to, to Maddox. Maddox ignored it. But years later, he has now bought the domain name. Nick Riccata is not a blackface lawyer and has posted a picture of Nick Riccata in blackface and then also not in blackface and says, this is Nick Riccata. This is Nick Riccata in blackface. They're not the same thing at the same time. And it's just like a, it's like a little SEO poisoning page that he set up. So people ask Riccata to, um, to respond. And this is not his response to that, but this is him promising to respond to it. And all of this is a needless aside Excellent. because it's not what I'm showing you by playing this video. Good night, Nick. Maddox made a website about you, by the way. Nick Riccata is not a blackface lawyer.com. So funny. Everybody's like, you got it. You got to talk about the Maddox thing. And I'm sitting here going, I want to so bad talk about the Maddox thing. We're delving into Maddox because Maddox has given us a gold mine. The gold mine is Maddox has finally, after six fucking years, decided to talk about the lawsuit. Sorry, I um, once again I muted myself. Let me repeat myself. Ignore his words. I have put this on mute, and I'm going to show this to you because I want you to look at him. Do not look at what he's saying. Do not look at anything else on the screen. Focus in right between his eyes, or maybe on the outline of his head, and just watch his head for a second. You see it, chat? Do you see what I see? Take a look. Not his horns, no. Just watch his head. His entire body is shaking. Every, his entire body. Uh, you can see his head is very noticeable, but like he's got the proper shakes and his entire body is shaking now. All right. Um, I think that that is it. I do not know. His, well, the rest of what he says is just like rambling nonsense. I just want to show you, show him shaking. Because <laughs> I'm mean like that, I guess. I don't know. I, I was watching this and I was looking at him and I was thinking like, that motherfucker is like vibrating. Maybe, ah, that's the expert. He doesn't have the alcoholic shakes. He just has the vibraldo on and it's buzzing as he's talking. That, that That's more reasonable, Chad. That's less mean spirited. So I'll just go with that. 